personal finance and personal growth, where I show you how to save money and make more money, all while making yourself better every single day. This video is gonna be something special because what I'm doing is I'm taking eight plus years of my own financial frustrations and money lessons that I wish I learned sooner, and I'm condensing them into one video for you to copy and paste this exact framework into your life. By the end of this video, you'll walk away with everything you need to start getting good with money in your 20s. And if you like the value that you get from this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know you want to, low key. The first step to getting good with your money is to understand exactly where you are with money. This is where I started in my financial journey and I'd like to think this is where everyone's starting point should be. Because that's what's going to be what drives all the other steps that I'm going to talk about in this video. And I think it's super easy to underestimate how deep and powerful this step is so I'm going to go over what this step should look like for you. This is where you take a brutally honest look at yourself in the mirror and you look at everything about your finances. And I want you to look at two things, how much you're making and how much you're saving. So if you really don't know where to start with this, I would say to start there because what that's going to do is that's going to open your mind to a ton of different things that you probably haven't thought of. So for me, after I looked at how much I made and how much I was saving, I looked at it and the numbers looked pretty good, but I still had frustration around those numbers. Because I had other things to worry about like student loan debt, building my credit score, and building an emergency fund. And I knew that I was well off compared to my counterparts, but something in the back of my head kept saying I could have been doing better. So maybe you can relate to this, but I felt like my money was moving in slow motion because I felt like I had to wait two weeks for a paycheck only to put a small fraction of that paycheck into my savings account. And then put an even smaller fraction of my paycheck into my student loans while the rest of the money went towards bills. It was frustrating because I had other plans. I wanted to be able to send my mom a certain amount of money every single month. And I wanted to live life and I wanted to go places and travel and I couldn't do that. And even though I was making over $65,000 a year when I first got started, and that's a great salary for any 21 year old, I realized that for what I wanted to do, that wasn't enough. So I had to take a deeper look because I figured, sure, I can complain about how little I'm able to put away every single month, but what are my spending habits like? How often do I just blow money for no reason, you know? So that's what I mean. Those are the questions you ask yourself. How are your money habits? What are your biggest pain points around money? And this is something to revisit once a month or so because it's important to look at your progression, you know what I mean? Because your frustrations and money habits are gonna change throughout your life. And here's the key thing that I want you to focus on before I move to the next step. Think deep when you're thinking about your financial habits. Even think about the financial guilt that you might associate with those habits. You'd be surprised at the amount of people that have a ton of financial guilt and even though they are aware that they have this level of financial guilt, they're still not willing to face their reality. That leads to repeating bad habits over and over again, making the situation worse which amplifies that guilt even more and along with that it can also lower your self image. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you cannot allow yourself to become discouraged when you're on the path to improving your finances. Because it can easily happen, especially if you're like me and you focus on that one thing, that one financial mistake that you made years ago. Or maybe you even feel like you made the wrong career choice. That's the thing about improving yourself. It's going to expose and highlight your mistakes and your shortcomings. So yeah, you're going to realize you have some holes in your game, bro. You'll realize you made some bad decisions or no one properly prepared you for this. But don't let that stop you from progressing. Instead, take those same frustrations and pain points and use them in the next step. And that's to get crystal clear on your financial goals. So you already understand exactly where you are with your money. So now it's time to take some actionable steps and create goals for yourself. I already made a video breaking down that process. And if you want to watch it, you can catch it up here. But just to give a quick recap and to expand on what I was saying in that video, this is what I personally did. I knew I wasn't just going to set a bunch of goals today and achieve all of them by tomorrow. So instead of setting myself up for disappointment, I set very specific long-term and short-term goals for myself. But they weren't just any old random goals and they actually had time limits assigned to them. My biggest frustration with money back then was I simply wanted to make more. So one of the first financial goals I ever had was to figure out how to make more money. They got me into exercising my options like overtime at work, learning how to interview for better, higher paying jobs, going for promotions, and learning how to make more money outside of work. And I also had savings goals, and it's actually a funny story. I had this weird idea in my mind. And the idea was once you work really hard to achieve a certain level of success, you can lose everything just like that. Thanos just comes down and snaps all your money away. And that can be true, which is why it's important to be humble and careful with your money, especially early on. And there's actually a crazy story I have for you about that. But anyway, I was pretty much paranoid about the idea that any and everything could go wrong at any given time. So I went ahead and set a savings goal to save $20,000 and I gave myself two years to do it. 
I also had $30,000 of student loan debt, so I set aside a goal to get rid of that as well. As you can see, these aren't like crazy groundbreaking goals. These are just steps that I wanted to take. You know, I, I just saw them as stepping stones that I wanted to accomplish on the way to getting to where I wanted to be financially. You might have a goal right now to stop living paycheck to paycheck, or maybe you want to move out of your parents' house. And by the way, if that's your goal, I have a video for that. You can catch it up here. I think it'll help you out a lot. Or you could have a goal that's simply giving back to your family. You see what I'm saying? Everyone's goals are different. So if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and leave me a comment down below letting me know what your financial goals are. And I know that not all of you are going to feel comfortable with putting your goals down in the comments, and that's fine. But something I would challenge you to do is, instead of just thinking about your goals, I would also challenge you to write them down so you can see them. They're a lot less intimidating that way. And I found that once you have all these ideas in your mind and you really start to think about what you want your life to look like and how you really wish things were different, it can start to overwhelm your mind, especially if you don't have them written down and you're only thinking of them. And then you'll start to feel like you'll never get there. But you can get there and it's almost always easier than you think it is. And what makes it easier is by having a plan and sticking to that plan relentlessly 100% without fail. That's how you can consistently hit your goals every single time. This is my favorite analogy to use. It's just like any goal with anything. A lot of you who've been watching me for a while, y'all know I love to hit the gym. And so if someone wants to get in the best shape of their life, they need a plan. Going to the gym five days a week, doing cardio 15 to 30 minutes for two to three days out of that same week, doing lifts and exercises that match their goals for adding strength or muscle or whatever, and having a good diet nine times out of 10 will get them there. And you don't need to be a fitness expert to understand that. Same thing for your goals around money. Like if you want to save $1,000 for the first time ever, and let's say you make pretty decent money, so you give yourself six months max to accomplish that. When you break that down, you can actually reach your goal in five months just by saving $200 a month. But the thing about that is a lot of us aren't disciplined enough to reach those goals because they purely rely on our discipline. Just like my gym analogy that I just talked about. It sounds good. It makes sense. It sounds like it's something easy to stick to until you actually do it. And on top of that discipline, you're going to need consistency. And that's the great thing about money. And that's, you know, you can make your life a lot easier by just doing what I always recommend. And that's to automate your savings. So in this case, you could save $1,000 in five months without really doing anything because you already done automated having $200 go straight into your savings account every single month. And once you do that for a while, you won't even miss that $200 because you'll be used to that $200 going straight into your savings account every month. The next thing you know, you'll look down and you'll see $2,000. That's a super simple example, but as your goals become more ambitious, just make sure your plans match that same energy you're giving your goals. Now, in my opinion, those were the top three steps to start getting good with your money in your 20s, and that's when you're just getting started. I want you to remember these three steps, and next week I'm going to really dive deep into how to become cold with your money with the rest of the tips. And I'm also going to tell you that crazy story that I was talking about earlier. Now, these tips I'm about to get into are about to show you how to get cold with your money. If you don't know what that means, I want you to listen very closely because if you do, this will be the only video you'll ever need on personal finance. The first three steps I just went over a couple of videos ago are the baseline for how to get good with your money. And if you didn't get a chance to check that out, I'll give you a quick recap. In that video, I'll talk about going over these three steps, understanding exactly where you are with your money, how to set financial goals, and then setting out a plan to achieve those financial goals. Like I said, I have a full video that covers all three of those topics in full detail, and I'll link it up if you want to check it out after this video. So anyway, those first three steps are going to constantly be on repeat, like they will become part of how you think. So while you're doing those three things that I just got finished talking about, you're also going to layer this extremely important step on top of that, and that's living frugally. I've created a whole playlist on the basics of frugal living, and I'm even in the middle of creating a redefined, more advanced version of that playlist for frugal living, because in my opinion, there's two sides of frugal living, and I'm about to break both of those down for you right now. As you hit your goals, make more money, and save a certain amount of money, it's extremely important for you to understand that you're still only a few mistakes away from going right back to where you were before you started improving. When I say frugal living, I don't mean clipping coupons, spending hours finding the best deal, or even thrift shopping. Not that there's anything wrong with those things, it's just not what I personally mean when I say frugal living. When I say frugal living, I'm talking about being intentional with your money and living below your means. So for example, you're going to hit your goals. Especially just by listening and applying what you learned, you will absolutely hit your financial goals. You'll make more money and you'll save more. And what'll happen is over time, you'll realize that you actually have way more options than you did before. And it'll make it very easy for you to look at the lifestyles of other people around you. And honestly, it'll make you feel a way about your lifestyle. 
You over here being frugal, they over here eating brunch, pinkies up and everything, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna inevitably feel like you're missing out on something. And that's why it's so important to keep your emotions in check. Because the excitement, the need to fit in, and the feeling you get when you feel like you're just sacrificing too much can all make you resent all the good habits you've been building and make you give in to the biggest financial mistake ever giving in to lifestyle creep. And I have an entire video on that. You can check it out after this if you want to, but I just wanna give you some quick advice on this real quick. Spending more money just because you're making more money now is only gonna hold you back in the future. The smart thing to do is to keep your expenses the same even though you're making more money. When it comes to frugal living, the name of the game is keeping expenses as low as possible. And without getting too deep into this, what lifestyle creep does is it takes step number two, which is getting crystal clear on your goals, and it erases it, which wipes away any clarity you have around your own goal to the point that you start to question your goals and you essentially end up going right back to the life that you've been trying to escape from, all because it's comfortable. And lifestyle creep is so dangerous because it comes in way more forms than just money. It also comes in the form of time. I lie to you not, while I was coming up with this video topic idea and thinking about what I was gonna say, there were people outside laughing, having a good old time, jumping in the pool, it's warm outside on a Friday afternoon, talking about some Geronimo splash. You know what I'm saying? I could have been like, man, let me join them real quick and see what they're out there hollering about but I'm on a mission. I have a message to put out there for my audience because I really think this type of information in this video can really help somebody out. And I need to jot these ideas down that I have in my mind right now because if I just stop and go out there and start swimming, I might forget what's on my mind right now. I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that when I have a really good idea in my head, it, it goes away if I don't write it down like that second. That's just, that's how I am. It's kind of like when you have a crazy dream and you wake up and you forget it within seconds. That's how my good ideas go in my brain. They're in and they're out, just like that. It's just like this, bro. We have to think about the purpose for what we do. Back when I used to schedule myself to work overtime at my last job, I couldn't just not show up just because my friends decided to hit me up because they wanted to hang out. Sure, it might have been tempting at times, but what was the point of the overtime? You see, I did it for a reason. In that case, it was for more money to achieve one of my financial goals. And my thought was, my friends will be there when I get back. I'm making this video for a reason. The pool will be there once I'm done. And that's the next step right there, thinking long-term about your money. And this is my favorite part of this video right here because this is where I'm about to straight up give you the game. Thinking long-term is all about timing. So when it comes to your career, you've gotta have a mental time clock that's constantly ticking. And that could be the time frame that you're going to ask for a raise, a time frame that you're going to go for a promotion, or it could be the time frame you plan on staying there while you figure out what you really want to do. Man, I wish somebody would have told me about this because I would have started thinking about these things before I even started my career. So once I caught wind of this, I was like, okay, by the end of this year, I want to make this much money. And by the end of year five, I want to be making six figures. And I set these goals and milestones for myself so I could make sure that I was on track. Not on track for what everyone else was doing, but on track for what I was wanting to do for myself. Here's the part that absolutely no one considers, and I'll be the first to tell you, I didn't consider this at first. Actually stay loyal to the time frame that you give yourself, you know what I mean? You might say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna give myself two years working here so I can build up my resume and prove that I have the experience and skills to qualify for a better job at a better company that pays more that also gives me more of a work-life balance, which happens to be what my case was. But it just so happened that within that time frame I gave myself, that was the exact time frame that I went through the most hellacious experience I've ever had in my entire life. I've had my bad days. I went home questioning my life, feeling like a complete failure. And there were so many times where I just wanted to walk out of work, give my boss some choice words, and just never come back to work ever again. But if I did those things, I wouldn't have been thinking long term, now would I? Instead, I pretty much would have been in a position where I had to recover and basically hope to God that another company would take me in. And that's exactly why they say there's no better time to look for a job than when you already have a job because then you're more relaxed, you're more confident. If you don't get the job, oh well, you already have a job anyways, you know what I'm saying? So your life doesn't change. On the other hand, if you choose not to have your emotions in check and you decide to storm off just because you had a bad day, you could be facing the exact same reality that a ton of adults are facing today, and that's money gaps and job hopping. And in my opinion, neither of those are good. We have to have some consistency about ourselves. So I'll tell you what I think is the best way to handle this situation. And by the way, this is the crazy story I was talking about a couple of videos ago. I hated my first job. And that's something I say all the time, but knowing that I didn't just 
up and leave even though I really wanted to. I told myself that I would stay there at least a year and a half so I could build up my resume because I knew pretty much after then I could go anywhere I wanted to. And the plan was throughout that time I would be looking into other places. It was the timing because something else opened up and I got a way better job, but that process took a couple of months. So while all of that was going on, I was still working a job that I hated. Why? Because I ain't missing no paychecks for nobody. I'm sorry. But you wanna know the crazy part of this story? When the pandemic hit the entire world last year, the last company that I was at completely shut everything down and everybody got laid off. Every single person, no pay, no nothing. But the company I'm at now, even though they did shut down for a couple of weeks, they made sure everybody got paid, every single person. And guess who got the benefit from that? Me, I moved within the perfect timing so that I wouldn't have to go through any of that mess with my last company. So in addition to thinking long-term about my career and persevering through that horrible experience, I also thought long-term about my money because throughout that horrible experience, I was saving and putting money away just in case something happened. And in doing those two things, it made sure that I was covered. But the blessing in all of this was the fact that I dodged the bullet because I still could have been there during the pandemic, which meant I would have had to shell out money that I've spent years saving looking sick. Speaking of long term, I can't forget about retirement accounts. Make sure you set up one with your job as soon as possible. And usually they're called 401ks, but check in with your HR department because it could be different for a different company. But whatever retirement account your job sets you up with, just know that the earlier you start, the better. Just putting a little bit of your paycheck into your retirement account now can lead to you having hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars saved and invested in the future. And by the way, this should be one of the first things you do when you get started. And if your job doesn't offer a 401k, a 403b, or something of that sort, getting a Roth IRA is a really good idea. Quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not out here trying to get sued or nothing like that. I'm just here to give you all the good things that I wish I knew about money a few years ago. And before I get to this next step, which I think is going to be the most important thing you walk away with, I would like to present you with a challenge. Long term is more than just money, retirement, career. It's also about your relationship with those things and your career. So I would challenge you to build relationships within your career so you could build that network of people that you're always going to want to keep. That way you can get coached and mentored within your career so you can possibly grow, get promoted, and make more money in the future. Or you never know, you might run into somebody who knows somebody who's a millionaire who can mentor you into just growing outside of work. And I've been blessed to have both of those opportunities, so I'm speaking from straight experience right now. I've done it. I've even coached and mentored people and I've watched them grow and get promoted within their careers and watched them make more money and just build a brighter future for themselves and their families. It's really awesome to see. It's just something that I do on and off camera, help people make and save more money. And it's really cool because it's a result of them seeking that knowledge in the first place. When it comes to your relationship with money, it's also important to look at your credit score and figure out how to improve it. I have videos on that too, but that's thinking long-term because that can affect the amount of options you have in the future. I have videos on that too, but that's thinking long-term because that can affect the amount of options you have in the future. And eventually you can learn how to leverage your credit card to make yourself more money and even get free stuff. But anyways, here's some gold here, bro. You ready for this? Create another stream of income and it doesn't need to be wild or groundbreaking or anything. For me, this is literally what I did. I put up a post on Craigslist one day showing people that I used to play on the drum line at my university. And I basically told the parents like, hey, I can show your kids how to make it on the drum line in high school and in college. They flocked to that. So that was a very easy $200 extra a month that I was making just off of doing that. It was super easy to set up, costing me nothing. Now that extra income wasn't life changing by any means, but it was $200 more a month worth of options that I got. That's the way I saw it. And because the extra $200 gives me more options, that means I can put it towards any financial goals that I set for myself. And you can do the same thing even if you don't have a talent like playing the drums because you can pretty much have any skill and make extra money off of doing that. I know this lady from my old job, she used to cook some really good food. I'm talking season to perfection. You know what I'm talking about? And she would bring plates to work and charge like three times what the original price was that she just paid at the grocery store. And everybody wanted some of that. Everybody did. So everybody was paying an arm and a leg for that good food. You know, some people drive Uber or Lyft and all I'm saying is this. It's never been easier to make money and I think we should all exercise our ability to do that because that money can add up over time and it can become very lucrative for you. I also made three separate videos on that. They're called side hustle videos and I actually made them into a playlist because they're all very different. 
I'll have that video linked for you so you can check it out after this video because I really want you to understand different ways you can make money. You can really get creative with this stuff. And it's actually really cool because in one of them, I actually interview a CEO. But always remember to diversify your income because relying on just one stream of income can actually really hurt you. And I think all the events that took place last year proved that statement to be true. Now, this one is actually really cool. Or maybe it's just cool to me because I'm a nerd. But check this out. Learn every single day. Learn about financial literacy, building better habits, running a business, or just anything that creates value. This simple habit has made me so much money, it's ridiculous. And the reason why is because one, it changes your mindset by opening your mind to the possibilities unlocked by other people telling their stories. I know that was a really long sentence. And two, it gives you more value to add to people because the more you learn, the more you grow. The more you grow, the more value you add. And the more value you add, the more you increase your earning potential. And I do this in the easiest way possible. Every day when I'm driving to work, I put on a podcast. And I'll key you in on what podcast I'm listening to right now. And that's Earn Your Leisure, Bigger Pockets, Smart Passive Income, and Work Less, Earn More. And that's in no particular order, but those are really cool podcasts. And I'd recommend anybody to check those out. I think it's really cool to hear people in a similar space as we talk about business, money, and success. Because that's where I find passion in life. But here's the thing about that. There's tons of books and podcasts on anything. So always learning and staying up to date on your passions is going to make you smarter within your passion. Whether it's filmmaking, art, photography, personal growth, or money. So those are just some free resources that have made me more profitable over the years. And when you do listen to a book or a podcast, what you're doing is you're investing your time. But I also want you to think about it this way. If you listen to a book or a podcast while you're doing something else, you're doing much more than just investing your time. You're straight up making the most out of your time. So if you're cooking while listening, driving while listening, or cleaning while listening, you're making the most out of that time because you're getting two things done at once. Facts. Speaking of investing, that's another way to get really good with money. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars on myself, and that's outside of college, and it has proven to pay off a lot. So I've bought courses, read books, went to business events, spent time with mentors, I've hired a coach, and I've spent a ton of time watching YouTube videos. These are all investments, and when it comes to investing in yourself, the best thing I can tell you is this. Whatever you're interested in or passionate about that you know for a fact you want to improve in and make money doing, that's the thing to invest in. For me, that was growing on YouTube, learning how to build a brand, and learning how to build a business. For you, it could be anything. And something I recently got into investing is in the stock market. And I've always kind of invested here and there in the stock market, but I really got serious about it this year. So every day when I wake up, I spend a good 30 minutes to an hour just learning the stock market and learning what good investments are and learning what the best practices are for individual stock investing. And I'm no expert by any means, but I've been putting thousands into the stock market and I'm extremely confident with all my investment decisions. And it's because I've been doing the proper research and every investment that I've made has performed extremely well. And it's because I've been doing the proper research and my investments have been doing very well over time. So the last step is keep leveling up. And that's reinvesting the extra money that you make. And I actually have a video coming out soon showing you guys exactly how I'm reinvesting the money that I'm making on the side. For the sake of this video, I'm going to give you some quick examples. So extra income I make from work like, say, bonuses and whatnot, I'll put back into my YouTube channel for better equipment. Like, for example, this camera right here. I'll also use some of that extra money and put it in the stock market. And the good news is I've made money in both of those. And now what I'm about to do is take some of my earnings from YouTube and use them towards my business expenses, which, you know, we'll talk about in another video. And as I continue to upgrade everything that I do, the editing software, I might even hire an editor or something like that down the road so I can buy more time to create more content for you guys. I can invest in better lighting, stuff like that, because I usually record at night. I don't know if you can tell, but I usually record at night, so I like to have more than just one light that's like right here, you know what I mean? Those are examples of reinvesting, and the whole point of reinvesting is to see a return on your investment over and over and over again and seeing that growth, you know what I mean? And I will definitely see a return on my investment. But as you improve and make more money and start to invest your money, always think about how you can be stepping your game up along the way, because it starts with discipline but it ends with consistency. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Stay cold.